Hey everyone, today we have Mark Diamond, the Managing Director of Antisense Therapeutics, here to share about an exciting news regarding its ATL1102 drug. Hey Mark, great to be seeing you again. Today's announcement is a huge one, a new indication for ATL1102 for limb griddle muscular dystrophy R2. I'm assuming it is also in the orphan disease space as well. So bring us on the same page. What is limb griddle muscular dystrophy R2? and what are the current treatment for it? Uh, firstly, uh, Edo, it's a pleasure to be uh, chatting again, Cyrus, and, and thank you for the opportunity to update on this uh, new uh, information or progress out of antisense therapeutics. As you highlighted, you know, it is very significant uh, advancement for the company. We've now identified a, a new uh, clinical, uh, potential clinical indication for AT1102, uh, which is, of course, our new lead program in antisense therapeutics. Uh, you're right, um, this new indication is a rare disease, uh, so it is in the orphan disease space. So uh, your limb girdle is a, is a rare genetic muscle disease, which is uh, characterised by a progressive weakness in the hip and shoulder muscles, which are also known as the limb girdle. So that's where we get the term limb girdle muscle disease from. There are about 30 subtypes of, of limb girdle disease. Uh, we're targeting one of the more common forms, which is known as limb girdle DR2, as you highlighted, uh, Cyprus. So um, limb girdle DR2 is known uh, to be caused by a mutation of the dysferlin gene. Uh, and uh, dysferlin is a protein which is present in uh, skeletal muscle fibres. And so... Uh, the disease is also known as uh, dysferlinopathy uh, because it's the reduction in dysferlin in the muscle fibres that leads to this progressive muscle weakness with uh, uh, loss of ambulation and, and, and upper limb function into uh, adulthood. So, uh, you know, the prevalence of the disease uh, is around one in 100,000 people. So they're thought to be around you know, three to 4,000 people with this dysphelinopathy, limb girdle DR2 in the US. Uh, so in, in terms of treatment options, well, there are none. So there are no approved therapies for, for limb girdle disease. And in fact, there really are no uh, disease modifying agents in, in late stage clinical development. So, uh, you know, it is an area where there's a desperate need for, for new therapies. You know, we're very excited by the you know uh, preliminary potential of the drug that we've been able to show in this uh, animal study that that we've conducted. So, you know, uh, in terms of market potential, because there are no therapies, it's, it's difficult to categorise the size of the market. But as you uh, I, I know appreciate Cyprus, if you know we look to say the Duchenne muscular dystrophy market, which we you know know very well. Uh, which is, of course, another you know rare muscle wasting disease. The you know therapies that are available there in the US, the excellent skipping drugs marketed by Sarepta, you know they're being um, made available to patients at around, well, I think the average price of therapy is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars US, you know, per treatment uh, for a, for a year's treatment rather. So you know if you apply the same metrics to you know this market. 4,000 patients say, you know, uh, what would be a million dollars annually for the therapy, it's a massive, you know, market opportunity in, into the billions. So, you know, it is, it is you know, clearly a commercially attractive space, you know, for someone who can find a, you know, a successful agent for treating the disease. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Uh, based on my calculation, I'm getting 3 billion, 4,000 patients in the US at uh, 750,000 a year. So that's a pretty huge market there. You know, that, you know, obviously, that's right, um, Cyprus, you know, if, you know, you were charging at that, uh, at that price level, but even as you, you know, highlight, you know, if you were pricing it more, uh, you know, at the, say, you know, lower level of uh, innovative therapy to 300,000, it's still, uh, per annum, it's still a huge market opportunity. That's right. Thanks, Mark. And can you share with us uh, how did you come across this indication? 
certainly it, so it was really a, you know very you know strategically minded process that that we undertook here Cyprus we were you know very keen to stay within that uh, um, you know skill set that the company had in in uh, being able to successfully develop a drug for a rare you know muscle disease so we see that as a core competency of, of the company and we were very keen to be able to leverage the relationships that we have with you know key players you know in that uh, in that uh, space it, uh, thinking really around the key opinion leaders who are, are treating this disease so to be able to you know leverage from existing relationships we had with experts in the field you know the the opportunity in Lim Girdle has allowed us to continue to work with a group of the Murdoch Children's Research Institute, where we ran, you know, animal studies in uh, the Duchenne's uh, model. So, one of the you know primary you know reasons for for you know, selecting this disease is because we thought it was a very good you know strategic fit with where the company is at the moment. The other reason uh, for selecting it as well too, uh, Cyprus, is that. You know, we were, you know, very familiar with the the immunomodulatory aspects of AT1102, having now assessed it in multiple inflammatory disease settings, and most recently, of course, getting a great sense of how the drug, you know, works on the muscle uh, and immune system through the work we're doing in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And so, you know, our team here identified that, you know, limb girdle had you know, many of the same you know, characteristics of uh, Duchenne's and also with the view that the, the effects that our drug was ha having in Duchenne's could have you know, positive benefits in limb girdle disease. Because for instance, what we know with limb girdle patients is that they have uh, in the muscles increasing levels of fat or adiposity. And as you may recall, Cyprus, you know, in our study in, uh, in our clinical study that we ran in Duchenne's, we were able to show you know, uh, ability to be able to reduce levels of fat in the muscle of patients with Duchenne's. We, you know, we also know that some of the immune cells that we were reducing in the muscles of Duchenne's patients are you know, relevant to uh, this disease. So, you know, for instance, the, the reduction of macrophages in the muscle tissue we know would, would be a, an important function or mechanism of action of our drug in limb girdles. So, uh, yeah, they, these were you know the, what really um, led to us exploring this particular disease indication. We thought because we knew well the mechanism of action eleven oh two, it had lower risk going into this disease indication. And this first study that we run is you know suggesting it was a smart move on behalf of the company to you know to 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 go into this trial because the drug is showing, you know, in this first study, at least uh, the requisite activity that would, um, you know, support us moving forward uh, with the program into, you know, further animal studies. That's great to hear, Mark. Seems like it's a promising one, given the knowledge transfer you all could bring across from your leading indication, Yushin Muscular Dystrophy. I've also noticed you guys are collaborating with Jane Foundation in the US for this uh, new indication. Can you share more about who they are and what this signifies? So that is a, a really important uh, feature of this program. You're right, we have uh, collaborated with the Jane Foundation and they're a group based in the US whose mission is to uh, find a cure for limb girdle uh, DR2 or dysphelinopathy. And, you know, they have a uh, number of, you know, scientists in the team. And as I said, their goal is to look to find a, a cure for this disease. So they've been really very helpful uh, for, uh, um, you know, uh, our, uh, in, in give, providing guidance uh, rather around uh, the animal studies that, that we're running at the, the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. We expect them to have, um, you know, further involvement in the program as we hopefully move the program into into uh, clinical development. So, you know, this is an exciting collaboration. Their website uh, at the Jane Foundation have a lot of, you know, very important you know, detail about this disease indication where I think shareholders would benefit from, you know, getting on and, 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 and seeing, you know, uh, what the Jane Foundation have to say about this disease. And in particular, I know they've got a very, um, a, a very interesting video which you know talks to the disease indication and also 
uh, introduces uh, you know some patients you know that, that have the disease and talks about the the level of debilitation that they're having to deal with and the fact that there are no uh, no treatments. So you know I think that would be a really um, helpful uh, video for those who would like to know more about the disease. Um, you know because I think it's got some you know great uh, insights there. So you know perhaps that's something you may want to share with uh, with the investors today, Cyprus. Thanks, Mark. And we will put down the link of the video right in our channel. Excellent. So what are the significant results from your animal study? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Cyprus. I guess sort of a high level perspective on the data was uh, that, you know, we really wanted to ensure that the, that the drug was working through its intended any sense mechanism of action in reducing the target within the muscles of the mice that we were running the study in. And just a remind on, on the study, it was a six week dosing study. We did three dosing levels uh, where the mice were dosed once weekly uh, with our, an anti sense targeting CD49D. And we were able to compare our data to a, a mismatch oligonucleotide. So this was a Another antisense drug that was um, was designed not to be uh, blocking CD49D, and and also we had some control animals in the study. And so what we wanted to show is that we could look to reduce the CD49D levels uh, in the muscle, and I guess that was one of the you know, most important take home uh, from this trial. We could see that we were able to reduce. CD49D RNA levels in the quadricep muscles of the of the mice. The other important observation too, and I, and I alluded to this before, we're able to sh uh, also show reductions in a marker called F480, and this is a marker of uh, of uh, macrophages in the muscles of mice. And so, you know, we're able to show a significant, uh, statistically significant reduction in uh, F480 levels, you know, within within the mice. So the data really sort of was, um, you know, gave us, you know, confidence at two levels that the drug, you know, was getting into the muscle, reducing the CD49D levels, but also having an effect on a, a cell population, the macrophages in the muscle, which we think are going to be really important for the clinical application of the drug. Thanks, Mark. So with this new indication added into your pipeline, what can investors take away from this? Just, so I think, firstly, you know, investors should be excited by the fact that, you know, that we've broadened effectively the, the pipeline at Antisense Therapeutics, which is going to add you know, more value you know, to, the, to the company and to the, you know, to the development programs that we're undertaking. You know, it does, uh, it does present as an opportunity to move away from the one indication application of 1102. So sort of de-risk, if you like, you know, away from that single uh, disease application of the drug. So while there's, you know, commonality in the disease, there are certainly you know, different features of the program in two, and, 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 and including the competitive landscape. So it really is a... You know, it is a diversification strategy of the company, and so I think shareholders, you know, should see it as that and, and be excited by the fact that you know that this preliminary data is pointing to this uh, opportunity in this new disease. I think also, you know, it's going to uh, allow the company to uh, potentially, you know, leverage off the very significant amount of preclinical and clinical data that we've generated on H eleven O two today. And the benefit there is, uh, Cyprus, that we can move, you know, uh, potentially very rapidly into clinical trials with this uh, compound because we've already a, a very, you know, large database of uh, safety data on the drug. And so the prospect of being able to move from an animal study directly into a patient trial, you know, presents there for us. So, you know, an accelerated development pathway, if, if you like. You know, it's great that we're you know moving again into a you know rare disease space. You know where the where we've got a lot of experience and, and be able to benefit from, as you highlighted that uh, knowledge transfer from working in you know DMD and other you know rare disease fields. I think that uh, also you know 
shareholders should look forward to the news flow, you know, that will, you know, continue to emerge. We hope positive news flow from, from the program. The next step for us is to undertake a longer study uh, in the same animal model, but where we'll be looking now for the drug's effects on the uh, fat levels or adiposity in the mice. We'll be looking at muscle damage and muscle function. So looking at you know endpoints that are directly relevant to to the disease. So you know uh, we expect you know moving into that study and the and the news flow that will emerge. You know that that um, will be. Um, in a, a potential rich source of uh, in evaluating uh, yeah, news that out of, out of the company. So I think that's an important um, aspect to the program as well too, because we know how you know important uh, um, news flow is for biotech companies such as such as ourselves. So you know this is uh, exciting for that you know for that reason alone. Thanks, Mark. And understand that uh, ATL eleven o two has potential for multiple other indications such as fibrosis, respiratory uh, inflammation, and diabetes. So how will this be prioritized among your other indications? Yeah, again, very good question, uh, a very relevant one. And, and what's exciting, of course, is the notion that you know, AT1102 is showing you know, to be a drug that could have very, very broad you know, clinical application. Uh, and you're right that it is the challenge, uh, which is a you know exciting one for management and the board at any sense, is to look to sort of prioritise the the way in which we're going to explore the potential of the drug. You know, we as we've been discussing uh, today, you know, we think it's it's appropriate for the company to be focusing in this core you know competency area of rare muscle disease. Uh, and where you know we know that there's limited competition, so that's in, you know where we're initially moving. Uh, we, you know the focus though still remains on Duchenne muscular dystrophy. You know we know that uh, shareholders are watching very closely the progress we're making with that program as we advance into a you know, pivotal study in Europe. So that still is the is the main game for for the company. But we think you know being able to run these um, research studies alongside that doesn't you know uh, doesn't take the company's focus away from the main program adds value as we've been chatting about earlier in an area that we know very well you know expanding the drug into areas that that you know sort of beyond that muscle disease indication definitely presenting to us there's some very large disease indications there Cyprus that, that we know that the drug you know could have great uh, potential in and we will bring them on we will bring them on over time, as we steadily, you know, sort of advance the program in, in Duchenne's, you know, our, the plan of the company is to, you know, continue to add, you know, resources, uh, human resources to, to the company to ensure that we've got the programs well resourced. And I think, you know, as we successfully advance the, the program in these muscle diseases, you know, that gives us opportunity then, you know, with um, additional uh, resources within the company to you know move into these other areas. So, you know, the shareholders should expect uh, further news. You know, on the expansion of H1102 or the broadening of its uh, disease application. Uh, but they, you know, they'll, they'll be down the track. Great, very, very valuable insights and exciting development for Antisense Therapeutics here. Thanks, Mark, for giving us an update today, and we will speak again soon. Bye. Hey, you're welcome, Cyprus, and thanks again for the opportunity. See ya.